Well, it's been two years since I got the Seiko Tuna SBBN017 Marine Master. And in those last two years, the price has gone down so much. I guess the, uh, the U.S. currency against the Japanese yen that I thought I better uh, do an update on this for those who are interested in a tool diver at a price point now that is under $700 and uh, comes on a rubber strap, a very good rubber strap, one of the most comfortable and pleasing rubber straps uh, I've uh, had on a watch, but I did take it off because uh, there's something about this uh, beaded blasted, uh, bead blasted uh, bezel on a uh, on a stainless steel that I really like. Now, because it's bead blasted, I guess some one could argue that uh, I would have been better off getting a bead blasted uh, bracelet, but I didn't. Let me see if I can get you a shot of the loom. Uh, very toolish. You got these huge round loom markers. I would say it's about 46 millimeters. I've measured it before, and uh, it, some people call it 48, but I think that's an exaggeration. It plays like a 46 or 47 on the wrist, and I've measured it, and it's closer to that. I mean, you might be able to call it a 48 if you if you uh, include the crown. The, uh, the quartz battery is something that is controversial for true uh, watch obsessives who feel that uh, the experience of wearing a quartz watch, excuse me, is incomplete, and uh, it just feels like there's something missing with a quartz. This particular quartz is the 7C46 caliber and it, it's supposed to have a battery life of five years. We'll see about that. Like I said, I've had mine I think for a little over two years. And see if you can see that deep dish three-dimensional quality in the Seiko Tuna. If you want a similar looking watch with a shroud, even deeper dish, even a little bit bigger, and you don't mind kinetic movements, uh, you might want to look at the Seiko SUN019. And I'll tell you what, that watch, in addition to coming on a uh, stainless steel bracelet, as this one does not, in addition to costing currently about $365, which is uh, quite a value, has sapphire. So that if, if you don't mind the kinetic uh, movement, if you don't mind keeping the kinetic alive, keeping that lithium battery charged through lots of wear, you might want to look at that as a less expensive alternative, plus you're getting sapphire. One of the big complaints I read about the Seiko Tuna is that at this price point, it should have sapphire, and it doesn't. It has domed hardlex, and people complain that the domed hardlex is susceptible to scratching and I don't have any scratches, but you know, I'm not doing any deep scuba diving in coral reefs either. So uh, who knows? I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to have issues with scratching. little doorknob ding here and there. No, I haven't done that either yet. Thank God. Uh, so you've got the giant loom markers. You've got the bead blasted shroud. You've got the super engineer bracelet. Uh, you've got the quartz movement. Uh, what I've read also is that the higher-end Seiko Marine Masters, such as this one, use, believe it or not, a different hardlex than, say, a Seiko 5 entry-level Seiko. I, I haven't confirmed that to be true. I've read it. I believe I read it on Watch You Seek. That's a fascinating idea. Could it really be that there are different gradations of hardlex quality in the Seiko factories? If anyone knows, uh, please uh, pass on the information. I would be fascinated to hear that. So here you can see a nice close-up of the Seiko Tuna. It's a real tool classic. Uh, it's at a price point now that's more affordable than ever. Like I said, if you want to go even cheaper and go with Sapphire and a similar looking tool diver, check out the Seiko SUN019. And until next time, I am out.